Turn to um, Mark chapter 1. And Mark, um, while you're turning there, Mark's given us a beginning. Uh, he calls it the very first two words are the beginning. <clears throat> the interesting thing about the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is that they all sort of start the beginning at different places. Um, Matthew starts all the way back. Theology. Uh, Mark starts with what we'll talk about today. Uh, Luke starts with the birth of Jesus, and John starts with, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God before there was anything else. So let's look at... Uh, Mark's beginning here, verse 1 and 2. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. I think this is more significant than we realize because <clears throat> before Jesus started ministering, everything goes all the way back through the prophets, through all the hard times of, of people being off and the, the focus being off of the Lord, all the way up to Malachi, um, and then 400 years in between that just a lot of self, just a lot of people being in the center and people being important and people, you know, Herod the king built the temple. It was Herod's temple. And, it, you know, it's just so much, just honestly. You, you know, if you think back, we don't have time to go through any of that, but if you think back, it's just really something. And then all of a sudden, there's this fresh winds of the Holy Spirit as the Lord begins to deal with, with John the Baptist, whose father was a priest, and he was supposed to be a priest. And he was a priest in a very real way. And all of a sudden, the, the, the Lord is ready to move. But when, when I say the Lord's ready to move, you know, we have a lot of move, move of God, moves of God in different churches and different settings and different things like that. Well, we want God to move. But this is the move of God that's going to bring Jesus to the forefront and all those years of everything else being in the forefront and people that were supposedly spiritual but not and all of that. But now all of a sudden the Spirit of God is preparing the way and he's preparing a person. He's preparing John and John looks... John is completely different. He's all the line of the priests all looked a certain way. They all look so religious, so so whatever. And John comes out and, you know, he's wearing camel skin and he's eating wild honey and locusts and stuff like this. And But he's the man that God picked and he's going to be the one that's going to bring this thing in. And, and finally, 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 it's not going to be about us getting something from God because that's what it was always about. We gather together, oh God, forgive our sins. Gather together, oh God, fix this. We gather together, oh God, this and that. But this time, this time, it's going to be about Jesus. Amen. And so John is the one who began, I, I love that, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written, I send my messenger. And so you see that the, the beginning starts with somebody preparing the way. Somebody preparing the way of the Lord. Preparing the way, the path. And it says, as it is written, not as we think it to be, not as religion has taught us, not as figuring it out according to the way that people are used to. Um, but as it is written in our hearts as it is written in our hearts, as it is written in our hearts. So God sends us as a messenger this year, huh? Coming up, and we have one task, prepare the way 
of the Lord. And we are, we are committed to that. We are dedicated to that. We, we don't want anything else but the Lord coming forth. We want, and we want to be like John the Baptist in the sense of, because John, John wasn't trying to work at preparing the Lord and himself. And I think, I mean, I look at all that's been done and all the things that have already been done and the spirit in which they've been done. And you've done it in the spirit of the Lord. You've done it in the spirit and nature of Christ. And I see that and I, I'm so deeply blessed by it. But this is a little different. This is, we've got a multitude of people coming. They're gathering and they're coming. There. And like I mentioned last year, but this year maybe even more. It's like the ark. I mean, it's like, it's like everybody's doing their own thing. All the animals are doing their own thing. And then God says, now. And everybody starts coming. They keep coming this year. And they're still coming. We're still getting things just this morning. And, and so we're, we're preparing the way of the Lord for them. We're preparing the way of the Lord for them. Of course, we have to do that in our own hearts, just, just like John the Baptist did. But we're making a way. So that he can come forth. And that's what John the Baptist was doing. Making a way so that Jesus would be seen. And so in uh, verse 3 it says. Um, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. In other words. I, I'm even reading this as like, make, let's make our paths to him here when we're get together. Let's make them straight so people can go straight to Jesus. <laughs> just straight to him. Just like that. And I mean, I just feel that thing that John might have been feeling. I feel it slightly that, oh man, this is going to be different. Finally, this is going to be different. Maybe he was even thinking, I don't want to be a priest the way it always has been. My dad's a priest, and he's a great man, and I love him, but I don't want to be a priest like that. And then God spoke to his heart and said, here's your priesthood. Prepare the way of the Lord. Here's your job. And he sent him out in the wilderness, you know, and said, you know, if they're really hungry, they'll come. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Verse 6 and 7 says, And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin and his loin, uh, about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, and this is what I like right here, and he preached, saying, get ready. I mean, think about this. He's called to prepare the way of the Lord. We are called to prepare the way of the Lord for this gathering. Yes. We're called to it. We're called. God is trying to draw us out even more, but there's more coming. We've got to get that path prepared, Amen. you know. And it says, and he preached saying, oh, I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. What's he going to say? What's he going to say? I love this. And he preached saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes uh, uh, I am not worthy to stoop down and to unloose. What did he preach? He preached, it's not about me. It's not about me. I love, I love what Jim shared when he first walked up here. Now, I'll tell you what it is in just one second. <laughs> he said <clears throat> that, Lord, may we not shine brighter than him why do we worry about what we're going to do or what we're not going to do or what we're going to be involved with let's just let him shine let him let him live let him go, come out you know not not all the things that trouble you know martha well i got to be busy i want to be busy i want to do something no 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 don't do anything Unless it flows from your heart, from yeah, life. Right. And let it bring him glory. When it's all said and done, let it bring him glory. Let it not bring us glory. Let us not be seen in the sense of it being about us. 
He said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy for it to be about me. <laughs> I'm not worthy for it to be about me. Isn't that simple enough? I'm not worthy enough for it to be about me, so I'm not going to make it about me. And the, and the thought that the, this is the beginning of preparation. I'm not worthy. Think about it. This is the beginning of the preparation. I'm not worthy. Not that we're, not that we're unworthy, but we're not worthy in the, in the sense of it's so much about him and it's so focused on him that I'm not worthy to make it about me. You see the difference? One is, well, I'm not worthy to do anything for God because I'm so, no, no. I am not worthy because he is so worthy. So we give ourselves. Somebody was jokingly or maybe asked seriously today if I was going to preach. Well, I teach a lot, but I almost feel like preaching starting to come out of me. <laughs> but so when we gather, it really it can't be about it. Who teaches or who doesn't teach? Can I get an amen? amen? It can't be about who leads worship or who doesn't. It can't be about who attends or who doesn't. It can't be about, you know, it can't be about all these things. We all can have that spirit. We can make a way for the Lord. We all can do that. No matter what, no matter where, no matter, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter if you're unworthy. Then it really, it's no big deal. If you're worthy, then it's a problem. <laughs> you know? But if you're not, it's like, great! You know? Let's just let what the Lord wants to do through us, because it's through us. We're not a bunch of individuals. We, we were individuals, and then we have come to gather together at his heart. Last year it was at his feet. Now we're shooting higher. Amen? Yes. Next year it will be gathering at his halo. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kidding. I don't know why I say this stuff. <clears throat> but I am not worthy prepares the way. Come on, think about it. We think that John, and, and he's going to say this all the way through, but we think that John's ability to prepare the way of the Lord is somehow preaching or this and that. But if you'll just go through all you know about John the Baptist, it very quickly comes down to this. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I can't uh, unloose his shoe latchet he is, because he is so worthy. And again, not because I'm unworthy. You don't have to focus on being unworthy. It's about how worthy he is. Go, well, he's more worthy than I am. Let's go with that. You know? Joyfully. Gladly instead of angst. You know? And wondering why. Well, I wonder why. Randy, let so-and-so do that. Well, maybe because the Lord said to. Maybe because he wanted to just mess with you since you weren't tuned up good enough yet. <laughs> you don't believe he messes with you like that? He does. He will do it. You know, if you are worthy and you are here to prepare the way of the Lord, God's going to bring somebody that you don't think is worthy. Therefore, you are worthy. Then why are they doing so and so? Maybe because they're saying, I'm not worthy. He is. Praise God. All right, so, oh yeah, I wrote down this. I'm not worthy and are important enough to be seen and heard. <laughs> so our hearts, our hearts prepare the way. See, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not just prepare the way here. Our hearts, because of that heart towards him, prepares the way. 
for him to come because he's the one that is worthy. Okay, verse, starting at verse 9 here. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Who is all this about? John is, John's doing this. Here's his work. You can't, you can't hear it, so you're going to have to look. Here's John's work. <laughs> Bam! The heavens open. God speaks. The dove comes down. <clears throat> I, want, I want Jesus seen here, but I want the heavens to open for Jesus. Yeah. I do. I want the heavens to open for him. I want him to go. I'm sensing my father. I'm sensing, you know, I want him to be so present that the dove comes down on him, not us. Oh, that the spirit would fall. Yes. Glory. No, no. Let the spirit show who he is and let us all go, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See? trying to get something to happen here. The only thing we need to happen here is Jesus to show up and, and the way be prepared for all those that are coming so that they can have a straight path to him. Amen. Praise God. Verse 10, the dove landing. The heavens opened for him so that he doesn't have to be stuck down here in a, in a carnal church service. Well, do you think it could be happen? It could happen somewhere? Jesus is going, man, I hate this. <laughs> you know, he's going, this is bad. Father, open the heavens so at least I've got a straight shot to you. Amen. Well, we if you give a straight shot like John the Baptist to him, a straight shot to Jesus, then he'll have a straight shot to the Father. And then this will really work similar to this, except for he'll get all the glory. And we'll just, you know, I mean, John's going, I knew it, because remember, the Lord told him it would happen this way. I knew it. May the dove descend on him. May the Father see his beloved Son in us and be well pleased. <laughs> How sweet would that be? That the Father would see his beloved Son in us and go, I am well pleased. Not that he would say, wow, what a great gathering this was. Oh, this was really special. You know, and we, you know, but rather the Father get his son out of us and that our focus not be on you know and I'm saying this because it's so easy to do something like this and your focus be on everything well what about this and what about that and what about you know you know here's uh, here I've mentioned this but here's all I ask you know last year it was really beautiful <clears throat> when we ate in here and everything and when we got through I noticed people just went Burr! And they started carrying stuff out and doing this and doing that. We didn't even have a team set up for that that I know of. And besides, I saw way more people than a team. It was just everybody going, this is what we're here for. We want to we wanna do this. We, wanna, we want God, to, the Father, to see his son in us. We want this not to be about us doing a good conference, which we don't use for this anymore. I mean, even that, those words, gathering at his heart. You know, all these people could come and gather at this place, could gather at New Creation, could gather in the United States here, could gather in this state. They could come here and gather and miss the whole point of gathering at his heart. You know? 
So that's why we're speaking. That's why we say what we say. That's why we're doing what we're doing. We're, we're doing that now. We're believing it now. We're, and, I, and like I said, and I, I see it. I see it in people. I see that. But I believe that there's the Lord still wanting to do more in us. Do not drop a bomb over us. Okay. <laughs> Take longer than that so I can get more coffee. In John uh, 1, still, verse 19, let's see. Yeah, let's read verse 19. <clears throat> and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they ask him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Okay. Folks, we're the messengers and people are coming here to have straight paths to the Lord. Who are we? We're not worthy. We're not. We're not. I'm, his wordings are very simple. They say, who art thou? What sayest thou of thyself? Talk, talk about yourself. Exchange, you know, email addresses. You know, um, network. We're not here to network, folks. We're not here to build our email list. <laughs> We're here to get them to Jesus. Praise God. Talk about yourself. Who are you? Who are you? Come on, speak up. Tell me who you are. It's not about me. It's about him. I'm here because of the Lord. I want the Lord. I seek the Lord just like you do. I'm not, I don't know more. I'm not better. I'm not worthy compared to him, and he's what's worthy. That was what John did, didn't he? He says, I'm the voice of one. He's like a signpost, you know. I'm the voice of one. He's pointing to Jesus all the time. He's pointing to Jesus. When they say, well, who are you? You know, are you so-and-so? No, you know, I'm not. Are you so-and-so? No, I'm not. Are you, are you that prophet? No. <laughs> I guess he got tired of using three words. <clears throat> I am not, I am not. No. <clears throat> Verse uh, 19 again, and, and oh yeah, this is the record of John. Okay. So he's about to tell you what, He's about to tell you the record of who he is, okay? So this is on his permanent record. That you know that is written down in the school for all the trouble that you've made. This is your permanent record. <laughs> this is John's, and this is his response about himself. <clears throat> it says, he didn't deny it, but confessed. And then it says, he, after deny, he's, he confessed again. I am not. So they're saying, well, if it's not about you, who is this thing about? I'm glad you ask. Glad you asked. Verse 23, and he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as, as said the prophet Elias. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. So there's verse 23 and verse 27. Make it where he can come. Amen? Let's make this where he can come. I mean, I'm glad all these people are coming. I mean, it thrills me on one level, scares me on another level, but it, and where are we going to find all the room just to be seated? But 
you know, I, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm thrilled, but I will be utterly disappointed if I don't feel like we made a straight path so that he could be here. Now, I mean in us, I mean for them, for the people that come, for them, that they experience him in that way, that they could say, you know what, I went to this thing in Texas and, and it was nothing but Jesus. That's what I got. I got him over and over from, it didn't matter. I would try to find somebody that wanted to talk about themselves and their great ministry or their great talent. I couldn't find one. I just, it's like they were all pointing to him. Okay, so will people do that from the pulpit? Probably. Will people do that from, with their instruments and stuff? Probably. Will all of us do it under every circumstance that'll happen? Probably. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> and then verse, he said, I, I am the voice of one in verse 23. <clears throat> I speak of one. I speak of one. I speak of one. Oh, wait a minute. It also says, it's saying, I speak of you. I speak to you. You got it? Did you catch it? He says, he says, I'm the voice of one. I speak of one, but I'm the messenger to speak to you. And say, you make straight the paths of the Lord. See, John's not going, well, I'm, I'm just trying to make straight the paths of the Lord. It's everybody agreeing with that. It's everybody saying, that's what we're doing, you know. And, you know, it occurred to me, somebody might say, well, you know, if all we talk about is Jesus, it might be boring. Well, you ain't going to like heaven, man. <laughs> I use that word loosely. This is verse 29, same, same chapter. <clears throat> the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Okay, so in verse 27 he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Just so you know, he never calls him Jesus. He doesn't. No, he says, this is the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. And it says, this is the one of whom I spoke. This is the one of whom I spoke, the Lamb of God. This is the one that is preferred before me. Okay, can you see that this might apply on the inside of us? <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. This is the one that's preferred before me. Here's how, you, here's how you say that. Me, like this. Everybody try that. Preferred before me. Good job. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. He's preferred before me. I have to prepare the way. I have to, I have to tune into that. I have to be aware of that. Now are you clean, but you're not all clean. Whether that's some part of us or someone here. We have to cleanse the lepers. Make a way for the Lord. Amen? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking of the, the ten lepers that came to Jesus, you know, and they're going, oh, Lord, you know, heal us. Jesus said, go your way to your priest and, you know, you'll be healed. And so they all were heading that direction and they all got healed. And nine of them kept going to their priest, and one of them turned back to his priest, which was Jesus. 
And Jesus said to the healed leper, will you be made whole? Will you? Will you be made whole? <laughs> Prepare his way in you then. Prepare his way in us. John said, one of the things John said regularly was repent. Okay, well, what does that mean? We go, oh, oh are we going to get off on sin? No, we're going to get off on getting rid of us. That's right. Amen. You know, put it all in a big bucket and dump it in the sea of forgetfulness. Hallelujah. And then prepare the way for him. Don't make, it, don't make it an obstacle course on the inside of you for him. No. Come in, Lord, and he's going. <laughs> Lord's going, thank you for saying that, Randy. Yes. Because <laughs> it's been hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, Randy. So he says, um, verse, let's go to verse 35. Again, the next day, John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, behold, the Lamb of God. This time he doesn't add the take it away the sin of the world. He's talking to his disciples. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay, well, Jesus, the lamb. They're following the lamb. They were John's disciples, and he said, Behold the lamb of God, period. Didn't talk about sin. And they followed him, the one John, the one name that John used for Jesus. Behold the lamb of God. It's pretty cool. He said, behold, and they went, let's follow. Amen. That's pretty cool. Um, two of them, right? One of them was Peter's brother. Did you know that? Andrew, Peter's brother. Peter's brother. He's going, I'm going to follow the lamb before Peter does. <laughs> and then he has to go and say, we have found him. We found him, the one that is the Messiah. It's a lamb. Amen. Come on, brother Peter. <laughs> Come on, big brother. Amen. And then verse 40, uh, 41 and 42, and then I'm going to have to quit. <clears throat> One of the two which heard John speak and followed him, followed him who? The lamb. the lamb, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, the Lamb, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to the Lamb. Hmm? They were lamb followers, and they're going out, and they're trying to get a flock together, <laughs> which you could call a gathering. Amen. Amen. See, if it's, if it's the lamb in you, then you're happy when someone else is glorified. Scriptures say that. When, when, when they're, you rejoice when they rejoice. So that spirit prevails among us. How many of you want that to happen? Amen. How many of you would like a little personal prayer before I get out of here? <clears throat> if you come up, if you want to come up to the altar, you can, but do not drink my coffee. And if those of you that want to, you can kneel. We're going to be using these during the gathering. Amen. Amen. 
some still room at the cross for you. <clears throat> Amen. Father, we want you to cleanse the lepers so that we can be like John, just pointing to Jesus and continually saying, we're not worthy, it's not about us, it's not us. We want a new regime coming in. That's what John was doing, bringing in a whole new regime, bringing in a whole yeah. new change. Everything would be different after this. And, and we would become the temple instead of going to temple. And, and we would have the life of that son within us. And, and he would have straight paths within us. And, and Father, that's what John was. And Father, we want to make this gathering about that. We want to make it for all those who come for them to to catch hold of something that is your spirit moving and falling on Jesus and glorifying Jesus and, 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 and quickening us to life instead of just faithful duty, quickening, the, quickening us to life. And so, Father, we ask, we ask together, we pray together. Father, the true altar is the altar in our hearts, the cross. And we there, we bow before it and we say, yes, we died and you are our life, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit spread the reality of this life all around as we, as we gather and bring in all these many that have never really, really heard this, others that have heard it, but it's, it's, it's uh, in a glass darkly as it were, and others that are, are, are getting used to it, but they, they want the 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 bread of it, the bread of life, to put it on the inside of us, Father, and the communion of it, the drink of your blood, and eat your flesh, Father. And so we don't have it in all together, but we have you. We do have you. Each and every one of us already has you. You're the life. You're the power. You're the, you're the nature that will do this. And, and Holy Spirit, you're the one that will only point to Jesus so we don't have to look to our own resources we look to the life that you've given us father we look to the spirit that you have given us father and we don't look to ourselves we thank you that we can look away unto Jesus father that was scriptures in Hebrews it says looking unto Jesus but in the Actual Greek is looking away unto Jesus, looking away from ourselves unto Jesus. John did that so magnificently, looked away from himself unto Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us full and running over. May it be like the new wine not being poured in us but flowing out of us to others. Blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, just in closing, I just pray that that spirit that you showed me, that spirit that you showed me with John the Baptist, and you showed me how dead and dull and almost like a like if a major city like New York had just been destroyed and was just burnt and crisp and smoking and everything, everything was like that until you spoke to John and said, said, I'm, I'm going to show him forth. He's coming forth now. We're not going to talk about him anymore. He's going to come forth. And John, I want you to prepare his way. And I want you to do it. I want you to look different and be different. I want everything about you to, to make it where they wouldn't be drawn to you, but to be drawn to him. Father, I just felt, when I saw that, I felt the rising of the tide of the Spirit of God saying, this is it, this is his time, this is his time, and I'm going to fall on these people, and they'll all become John the Baptist. They'll all declare him. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Just thank him right now. Hallelujah. Just thank him right now. Don't try to feel it. Don't try to, you know, get it through any other source except just thank him. Call those things which be not as though they already are. Because in him they already are, and that's where you're located. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can continue to pray if you so wish. Uh, you're, you're allowed also to get up now if you want to. I'll turn it over to Jim, wherever he went, if he wants to do more. <laughs>